A lot of times we think that tears really are legitimate reasons to feel sorry for people. Not in God's mind. He doesn't mind the tear of repentance. But then he wants you to look up and say, praise God, my sins are gone. And begin to sense there's a way to make it. There's a way to have victory. There's a way to be blessed. There's a way to grow up. There's a way to be more than a conqueror. There's a way to have the glory of God in my situation. There's a way to do it. I want to give birth to something today in you. I want to stir something inside of you. Slaves stay slaves because they have a form of security. Some problem is met for them. They don't have to worry about where the leeks and the garlic comes from. Whoever's a master will always promise something. And slaves stay slaves because to be otherwise is dangerous. It's a step forward. It's a risk. Oh, hallelujah. What risk is it? If God before you, who can be against you? He's called you to a high place and you can be victorious. Morally, mentally, psychologically, economically, spiritually, he's called you to stand a mighty people. I refuse, whether as a missionary or a pastor, to minister to anybody I have to feel sorry for. I don't have to feel sorry for nobody. I can rejoice because God has made them. Jesus said to the poor, the gospel is preached. There's no reason for your tears. You may be without a husband. And it may be a sadness. But bite your lip. And look up. And say, devil, you've cost me enough. But you're not going to ruin me nor bankrupt me. I shall live. I shall not die but live and give God the glory. I shall be more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Nothing can happen to anybody in adversity if God is in the situation that can do anything other than to make you a greater person than you would have been. We have men today in business who had all kinds of problems, never really appreciated or fit into the mold. And they become the outstanding businessmen, the outstanding statesmen. Mama didn't care for them, perhaps, and Daddy didn't even stay at home. But instead of it destroying them, it brought strength into your life. Listen, God can cause every stumbling block to become a stepping stone. You haven't lost a thing. The truth of history is that no man can curse you if you let God bless you. Nobody can steal from you if your source is God Almighty. Nobody can bankrupt you if you know where it comes from. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because it's he who meets my every need. It's he who loads me daily with benefits. Do you know what will keep you from being blessed? Yourself. And this is nothing but what I feel I've earned out of being your pastor for years. The ability to be just honest with you. I see some of you come in 20 minutes before the service is over. And I thank God, does that happen in their lives? Are they 30 minutes late for a job and don't get it? Are they 30 minutes late for a revelation and don't grasp it? Are they 30 minutes late for a victory and don't receive it? Listen, you have the power over your life if you're a born again believer. Nobody can cheat you, nobody, nobody but yourself.
And I share it because I believe you can make it. I declare it. I'd never preach this message to people who couldn't. I'd never preach this message to people where there's no hope. There's times I'm silent and don't say a word because I feel it couldn't do something positive. But I know that you can be more than you are. I know you can grow. I know you can be victorious. I, I know you can bring glory to God. There's nobody with more spiritual ability than you, mental ability than you, economic ability than you. He's for you. God wants to bless you. And if you'll take the responsibility for your failures and say, God, it's my fault. I don't know where or how at times, but there's nobody but me who can keep me from being blessed. If you believe it, he'll set before you an open door. Maybe not in the short term, but in the long term, he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me a moment longer. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. He will teach everything. He will teach you how to live righteously, godly, holy, positively, and prosperously in this present hour. Christian, we need to demonstrate that God is more than a church service. He's more than a choir song. He's more than a good get, good get together. He is Christ. The deliverer who's broken the power of the curse and he said to the captives, you're free. I've seen men go to Bible school, come out and slump into a chair after four or six years. Why? They didn't have it in them. They didn't have what it takes to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and then pay the price. It's work. It's work. It's work. If you're going to be victorious. Listen, Christian, some of you are looking to meet Lady Luck. She's no lady. She's no lady. Lady Luck will turn on you. You're looking for Lady Favor. She's no lady. She'll go date somebody else. You'd better come to know the man Christ Jesus. And when you know him, he gets inside of you. And the spirit of Jesus works in your situation. And you win because you're a winner. Lazy people will never make it. We all were lazy once. Every single one of us, there was a time we were lazy. My dad got it out of me at a young age, but it was there. But we are born that way. Helpless. And liking it so. Listen, there comes a time when you have to make a decision. Am I going to remain helpless and be a slave? Or am I going to accept maturity and say I bow before no man, no system, nothing. God has blessed me. I am able to live victoriously in this hour. I don't care how many prosperity messages you hear. There is no prosperity that's divorced from a marriage to you. 
It is not an outward fortune that smiles upon you. You will be a friend of prosperity. You will be a friend of freedom. You will be a friend of labor. You will be a friend of honesty. You will be a friend of sacrifice. You will be a friend of truth. You've got to be. But when you are, he's for you. He wants you to stand in this hour as a testimony of his power in this moment. I saw a vision in the spirit. Not with my eyes, but with my mind. I saw God do something in Detroit. That was written up in every major news magazine in the nation. I still believe it's possible that we could be the head and not the tail. I believe it. I look and I see kids in our church without hope. I was thinking maybe I'll let somebody else preach in here. I'm going to get them together somewhere, somehow. And preach until they can believe that what they think and what they decide makes a difference. We got kids in this church. They're blank mentally. They're tuned out. Nothing disturbs them or helps them or anything. And the only thing they're sure of is their sexual appetite or their physical appetite. God make men out of them. There's hope in our generation. As long as there's a God who gives us an hour. It's this hour. There's an opportunity for people to rise. We declare it's the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Stand with me in the service. Holy Ghost is a teacher. You'll be learning all the days of your life. He will be teaching you everything there is to learn. There is opportunities in your time. There's privileges in your moment. Will you stand in your tent door? Look at the hardship of your life. And we or will you count the promises of God and say, I'm still rich and my God is able and he will deliver. Take a hold of your moment and let God move in your life. No man is more than a brother to you. No woman is more than a sister. But there's a God who we bow before. And he sets before us an open door that no man can shut. It's a time of visitation. Either we stop and we think about what we've had. Some good meals and wish we were there. 